Ulrich Brocknard, a professor of European studies at Stanford University in Berlin and joins us live now. Thank you very much for your time, Ulrich. Uh, can you take us through what happens next? What now? Well, what we see is not so unusual in Portugal and it's also not so unusual in other countries that have experience with a minority government. So no matter what the final votes that still need to be counted show, there is a party of the establishment that made clear that there is a firewall and they won't join forces with a populist newcomer. And that means that if both parties are not willing to do what is very common in Germany to form a grand coalition and both ruled it out, then in the end, no matter who is in the driver's seat, it will be a minority government, which will be very difficult to get important reforms through and to increase the urgently needed investments. No, Ulrich, I speak enough Portuguese to know that Chega means enough. Enough of what? Why has the far right seen this unprecedented surge in Portugal? Well, in many countries in which we saw a rise of populism, it was a form of dissatisfaction with problems have not been sufficiently addressed and there is not enough economic growth. In the case of Portugal, this is the leader in a situation of a recession that has a lot to do with long-term COVID implications and also the sanctions against Russia and a number of problems that are not specifically Portuguese. But in that particular case of Portugal, it's not that they don't have growth rates, but people would simply say, it's not my GDP, I don't see the benefits. If there is still inflation, a problem for the people, if housing prices are way too high, Portugal has a very low income level and also a brain drain problem that public services don't function the way they should because qualified people rather go to other places if they don't see a future in Portugal. On top of it, there are corruption issues, fraud, mismanagement, and a number of problems, which makes it relatively easy for populists to instrumentalize it and to address people's emotions. And there was a large turnout. This election saw a rise to 66%, the highest, in fact, in Portugal for years, I understand. Why such a big turnout this year? Well, we live in different times. There have been times in which democracy meant you vote and then you give a mandate for four years to a party and they rule. And after four years, they compete with another party in the case of a two party system like Portugal. And then the winner takes it all and moves on in a different direction. Now we see much more participation based on a different understanding of citizens, what it's like to be an active member of a democratic system. But we also see a growing importance of social media, which allows to create a feeling of things are not okay, no matter if the facts are objectively the facts or if it is a constructed reality. We've seen this in Italy, in which a flood of migrants is basically 60,000 in a country of 60 million. And the same is true with instrumentalizing people's fear by a massive social media campaign. And this is getting worse with AI that is producing much more content than ever in the history of our Western democratic systems. And Ulrich, we're seeing a lot of elections this year across Europe. We're expecting to see more and more surges in the far right, mostly from progressive countries. Why is that? Well, on the one hand, we have seen more than two decades of a social change that would represent rather something like a move to the left. And if the pendulum then swings back to the right, it's a relatively normal phenomenon in Western type democratic systems. But we also see a much more important role that social media plays and a form of living in bubbles in which a reality is not necessarily what's happening on the ground. I don't think that this is a main problem in Portugal, but it will be a main problem when we look at 
the importance of social media in European parliamentary elections in June and certainly in the United States. Ulrich, thank you very much for taking us through that. Ulrich Brockner, live for us there from Berlin.